Coming up on this episode of the new Fly Fisher, we're heading north. We're on the hunt for giant pre-spawn smallmouth bass. It's June and the fishing is on fire. Ooh, nice fish. Join us as we are at Hawk Lake Lodge for this big fish adventure. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products. Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks. We begin this journey in Northern Ontario, where the rubber hits the road, literally. Hawk Lake Lodge, a drive-to multi-species fishery, has everything traveling anglers look for in a full-service fishing destination. Exclusive access to 20 lakes other than the main lake, catch and release trophy potential, incredible cuisine, and your own private cabin with personal secluded hot tub ensure your time on Hawk Lake is as near perfect as it can be. So what species can you expect at Hawk Lake? Smallmouth bass grow big here, like that. with fish ball. often eclipsing 20 inches, northern pike in the trophy category, and the potential for world record walleye. And the best part? All three species will readily eat flies. Joining me on this northern adventure is good friend Tom Rosenbauer. We're being guided by young gun local expert Jeff Blum. It's springtime, early June to be exact, and many of the lakes at Hawk Lake Lodge are pre-spawn. Males have just started to make their nests, and the big females are still relating to deeper drops, waiting for the perfect time to come shallow to spawn. This week, we're after the big females. One of the first things you need to figure out when you come fishing in the springtime is what the smallmouth bass are looking for with respect to the speed of your retrieve. So we've got a couple of things going on here. There's a little bit of current uh, in this lake, uh, so that's gonna affect your speed, number one. Number two is the guide, Jeff, is back trolling because I'm left-handed and I'm casting to shore, so I'm not casting over us. And number three is actually how fast these fish want it presented. So when you're figuring out what speed you're to retrieve your flight, which they want it slow today, keep in mind that you've got those three factors, boat speed, current, and the speed that the fish are looking for to keep in mind when you're trying to unlock the puzzle. All right, first fish of the trip, and it feels like a good one. Oh, not too bad. Now the funny thing is, is that this fish hit, as soon as this fly hit the water, Jeff and I were talking about some things and all of a sudden I stripped in and boom, it was on, just wait. Didn't even feel the strike. Oh, but they fight so hard small oh, dude. Yeah, they did. Oh. Nice. Good work. Beautiful. All right. All right, flies out. Let's take a look at this guy. Not too bad for the first smallmouth of the trip. Beautiful colors on that one. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get this guy back in the water. I'll see you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's early spring. The ice has just rolled out of here, you know, in early May, mid-May. It's now early June. Things are just a little slow. So we're fishing for pre-spawn fish. We're looking for them cruising these uh, 
um, these shorelines getting ready to spawn, but they're not quite there yet. So, amen. I'll catch some eyes all day long in this situation. Feel a hit? You just sucked it in. Just pulled it in right away. But it's, as you notice though, right, the sun's now come on this shoreline. Yes. Right, and now things are warming up. We didn't get anything on the other side of the lake. Mm -hmm. And now that's one fish out of four strikes. Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing what the sun does to these fish to warm them up and get their metabolism going. Oh, it's, it can be within 10 minutes, yeah. five minutes. Yeah. And absolutely. It's like a different fishery. So we just pulled into the second spot here this afternoon here at Hawk Lake Lodge and, and what strikes me right away is the clarity of the water here. It is super clear. You can see probably down six, eight, ten feet. But fishing for smallmouth, that tells me that I'm going to have to watch their reaction to the leader setup that I have right now. Right now I'm fishing a nine foot, ten pound tapered leader, ten pound diameter at the tippet. Um, I'm going to have to watch the fish's reaction and pare down if that tippet's too thick and it's spooking them. So, I got him. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Didn't even look at it. Wonder if I should change this fly. Yeah, he's not interested at all. No. He's cruising right by. Eh? Flip me the fin. Wonder if a crayfish would be better than work off those rocks. Yeah. Yeah, off the drop. See the fish moving to the left. Yeah. Oh, I see it. There's two of them there. I'm changing flies. Yeah. That's two unspooked fish that didn't even turn to look at that fly. Oh, got him. There it is. Yeah, fantastic. We've seen a couple of fish cruising around here in this flat. And uh, Jeff suggested after refusal of these fish taking streamers, that maybe we give the top water a try. And I'll tell you, Fishing top water for smallmouth bass is my favorite way to bass fish. So the fact that the water's warmed up enough that maybe they're gonna start taking on top. And then that. Nice fish. Absolutely. Okay. So the water's cold. That's the fly we're using. It's got a concave nose on it, so it pushes a lot of water, All right? Now, green color, I think, you know, being springtime, you're here, still hearing spring peepers at night? Yes, we are. Right, so frog pattern, you can't go wrong in my opinion. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. Another little small mouth, but a great way to start the topwater season here at Hawk Lake Lodge. Let's go get some more of those. Top water all day. What a you sip. sip. Did you see it. that? What fun. That is amazing. Such a gentle, gentle sip. I don't think that I've was, ever seen it like no, that before. No, that was That's such like a cutthroat a trout. Yeah. That was such a gentle sip. You know what, I'm gonna hand bomb this fish because we can. This is a big, I think this is one of those females that's been cruising the flats. Yeah, absolutely. Because the males are significantly smaller. Remember, we are in pre-spawn here. The water's still super cold. And these fish are just fixing to start to spawn. Oh man, what a take. I've never seen anything like that coming out of a smallmouth yeah. bass. 
Yeah, that was quite the take. I wasn't even sure if she was gonna eat it. <laughs> yeah, no, just nosed up to it. And I was, I had my doubts, true. But for such a little sip, such a gentle sip. Oh. Look at how deep she took it. <laughs> and to see it eat like that, there's nothing like, nothing like smallmouth bass fishing. There really isn't. Such an absolute pleasure. Okay, let's go let her go. So in the springtime when the water's cold, slow things down, like super slow. That was unbelievable. That's as slow a take as I've ever seen in my entire life. What happened there was really quite interesting. I was concerned about my diameter of my tippet um, with respect to spooking these fish. But what happened was I switched to a crayfish pattern that was quite bulky. And Jeff noticed as I was casting, sight casting to a cruising fish that as that fly plopped down, the fish turned immediately on it. So he suggested that we switch over to a topwater popper. Now, there's nothing that creates quite as much commotion on the surface as a popper. And because of that, we were able to catch two really, really nice smallmouth on topwater. So we're fishing for pre-spawn, just spawning smallmouths. There's a few beds. We're gonna stay away from the beds. We're not gonna fish, fish on the bed. So we're looking for fish, mainly females, the bigger females that are a little bit deeper. So what I'm gonna do is cast in toward the shallow, but not all the way into where the beds are. Let that fly sink. And as, when I first make the cast, I'm gonna tighten up my line because sometimes bass will take the fly as it drops and you can often see that lie straighten. There'll be a little bit, of, little bit of curl in the line and if you see those curls straighten, that means a bass has taken it on the drop. And then I'm gonna use fairly slow strips and let, give it plenty of time to drop in between. Don't worry about missing the strikes because you will feel that tightness or see the line tighten. So I'm gonna start out with really slow strips with a lot of pause in between. See if that works. As with all other kinds of fishing, if you're not catching fish, then you need to switch up your retrieves. Try something different. So I'm using an intermediate line and a weighted fly so that I can get deep if I need to. Yeah, with that intermediate slow sinking line, if I wanna go in and fish the shallows, I still am not hanging bottom every time. And what you wanna do is make sure that you keep your rod tip low to the water. We got a little bit of wind today, and if you keep your rod tip low to the water, you're gonna keep that fly totally in control. You're not gonna have a lot of slack blowing around in the wind, and you're also gonna be able to see and feel those strikes a lot better. There's a fish. So what we've been doing is switching out retrieves. That's the first thing you wanna try, is to switch out your retrieves. Try slow, try fast, try erratic, try whatever. This one, I picked up my pace and uh, picked up this pretty nice smallmouth by picking up the pace, which I wouldn't think would work this time of year, but it worked. Took a dragon tail jig fly. There she goes. Bye bye. Fish. 
Nice. Oh, it's a good one too. Yeah. <laughs> Strong smallmouth, man. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a donkey. Right, hooked right in the top of the mouth. Now, I've been fishing with a crayfish pattern after that first fish this morning and then didn't have confidence in it, so I went back to my bunny leech and got him. Now, it's always important when you're holding smallmouth bass or any fish really to support their body weight at all times. Um, they often have never felt their own body weight out of, out, of, out of water, felt gravity, so looking after them is paramount. See you, dude. Let's do that again. So I kind of switched it up. I finally, finally stopped changing presentations because it just wasn't working. Finally went to different flies. I went to a black fly instead of a white fly. And then I hung a little nymph, a little, actually a carp fly, on the back of my streamer. And this nice small mouth took the nymph. So, you know, the, the nymph wouldn't get deep enough by itself. So I hung it behind a heavy streamer to get it down to where the small mouse are. Well, that's a good fish. Fat. Looks like a female, isn't it? Took that nymph deep too. Sucked it right in there. Come here. There we go. I was just about to give up on this spot. And this little guy came out and just whacked it. Now, one of the things we haven't seen today is oftentimes smallmouth bass will, um, little dude, nice. Oftentimes smallmouth bass will, uh, you know, when it's warmer, they'll school up. And when you hook a fish, especially when you're fishing with a partner, it's important to have your partner throw out behind the fish that you hook because oftentimes they'll compete for whatever's in that fish's mouth. And it's really fun to watch a whole big school of water wolves chasing your fly. Thank you. There you go. Cool. All right, on, we come into this little lake. It's called uh, Cliff Lake, and um, it's attached to the main lake, and it's three or four degrees warmer than the main lake is. So I decided that I'd grab Jeff's fly rod here, which has a popper on it. It's a nice fish, too. And you get a fish in the springtime on a popper, is super fun. And this is the same, Jeff, this fish took the same way as that, that big one did yesterday. Exact same way. Just yeah. didn't, no splash, just sucked it down, didn't even break the surface of the water, really. Very down. So you really need to use your eyesight when you're popper fishing because you never know when th that Fish is, <laughs> that popper is just going to disappear. Look at that. He's ah. right there. <laughs> Double header. <laughs> that was cool. A smallmouth chased those in, chased the streamer and the nymph in, and I saw him. I saw him come in and chase it, and he turned away, and I just dropped the nymph in front of him, and I watched, and I saw that mouth open, and he grabbed the little prince nymph.
that was cool to see the whole thing happen. These fish in this warmer water are a lot more aggressive than the other lake. Oh. All right, so I'll show you this fish and then I'll show you the fly. Actually, you know what? This fish is hooked perfectly in the corner. Fat little mama. Look at that. Just pops out just like that. That's what she ate. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh. So Mark's fishing a hard bodied popper, and I'm fishing a hair bug. One I tied myself, and hair bugs are not easy to tie, so I'm pretty proud of it. Um, and the fish have been striking this short, or I've been having trouble hooking them. I don't know what. But uh, finally, finally connected with one on the hair bug, so I'm happy about that. Hair bugs don't make as much noise usually. They're a lot more subtle and they're a little softer. Um, but sometimes the bass prefer, you know, not a hard pop, but just a, just a gentle disturbance on the surface. So, um, you know, you try both and, and see what works. We fish the day away and find ourselves back at Hawk Lake Lodge just in time for dinner. But our day isn't done yet on the water. Evening time is the right time to target walleye, big walleye. So we load up and head to the Narrows in search of giants with owner Ted Putnam. We fished for a bit, both Tom and I throwing three inch black dragon tails. And of course, once it got too dark for the cameras, the big fish ate. Nice. <laughs> So what are the things that you could expect that you have a legitimate chance at when you come to Hawk Lake Lodge is to catch a trophy walleye. This fish just might qualify for an IGFA length world record. She taped out at 77 and a half centimeters or 30 and a half inches. It is the largest fish I've ever caught on fly and it is a true pleasure to be able to let this big girl go so that she can make more of these trophy fish here at Hawk Lake Lodge. Let's let her go right now. Hawk Lake Lodge is an internationally awarded drive-to location famous for great friends, food, and of course, fish. Beautiful 20 inch smallmouth. Your private cabin is home away from home, just steps away from the main lodge, with access to dozens of private lakes, including the main Hawk Lake. You really have exclusive access to an incredible fishery. We head out for the day and do a short portage to one of Hawk Lake's private back lakes in search of pre-spawn smallmouth bass. So one of the things you want to do when bass fishing is to make sure that as soon as your fly lands, you lower your rod tip to the water and you take all the slack out of it. Bass are notorious for taking a surface fly as soon as it lands or without it moving. And they're also notorious for taking a sinking fly on the way down before you've even started your strip. So you want to be ready. So as soon as that line hits the water, you're going to have a little slack in there. Just tighten up so that you have no slack in there and you're ready to set the hook. Fish, good one All too. Right. Just saw its back come out and grab that popper. Nice. Ooh. Oh, that's a big Ooh, fish. Oh, that's a big fish. <laughs> Ooh, that's a big fish. Ooh. Ooh. One of the cool things about fishing in the north, yeah, that's a good one, is that as you can see, we've got a barometric 
pressure change happening here. There's a front moving in and uh, we've predicted that this is gonna turn these fish on. We've just started today back here at Wolf Lake and so far we got a good one to start the day. So that begs the question, what happens to smallmouth when the barometric pressure changes? The changing barometer or environmental pressure has a dramatic effect on fish feeding. Generally, pre-front, the fish will increase their feeding patterns, then shut down during the vent. Post-front, techniques generally need to be slowed way down as the fish are negatively affected. It may take a few days for the fish to return to their regular feeding patterns once the barometric pressure stabilizes. So you make those changes to your technique and to your presentation, and you'll have a better chance at catching big smallmouth bass. Oh, that's a good fish, man. That's nice. Now I've got six pound tippet on here. I've gone light today, just because I feel like these bass are gonna be a little bit more sensitive to the weather, and I got them. Great fish to start the day. Fantastic. Wow, that crab pattern. Whoa, water's warming up. You can tell they're frisky today. Acting like smallmouth should. A double header. So Tom and I are doing two different things today. He's fishing deep in the water column and I'm fishing the surface. Uh, I always like to do opposite of what my fishing buddy's doing. Um, number one, you cover more water. And number two, you figure out the puzzle way faster. We pick up and make a run as the front hits us and the fishing actually gets better. Quality, quality fish. Now I actually switched off. We're in a, in a new spot and oh, barely hooked in the top. And uh, I've actually switched over to a, uh, uh, a crayfish pattern uh, because it is quite choppy and, and we are fishing a lot deeper. And um, First cast right away. Just amazing. Big fish of the trip for me. So when the weather changes, you need to make the proper adjustments. That's a great fish and you too will have fantastic success here at Hawk Lake Lodge. All right, I'll let this guy go. Ah, took it on the drop. Another nice fish. Well, this isn't that mystical 20 inch bass, but probably my nicest of the trip. Very heavy fish. Took that crayfish. That is a pretty bass. Right as the rain started, these fish have really switched on.
So for a lot of bass fisheries, you probably only need one fly line. And the go-to line, for the most part, is an intermediate line. An intermediate line is a slow sinking line and you can fish shallow with it, just fish with an unweighted fly. And you can also fish deep with it. If you put a weighted fly on, it'll pull the intermediate weight line down and you can fish it deep. So that's really a go-to line. But if you're gonna be fishing a big lake like this, you're probably gonna want two or maybe three fly lines. I never go without a floating line because I love fishing poppers for bass. And um, you know, if there's any opportunity at all, I'm gonna fish a popper. So you need a floating line for that. And then if you're in a big lake, particularly if it's midsummer and you suspect the bass are suspended deep, you're probably also gonna want a full sinking line or a depth charge type line. So um, three lines are great. Probably two is a good idea on large lakes. Oh, there's a fish in deep. Feels heavy too. Slow strips, lots of pauses in between. Yeah. That's a great fish. Add some weight to him. Oh. Again, off in the deeper water, those females hanging out. Yeah. Pretty, pretty fish. That's a good fish. So what's interesting about where we're fishing is we're fishing a very steep drop. And what we're finding is that there are nests up in the shallows, it's pre-spawn, but the females are actually out in the deep. So they're not up on their beds yet. They're not up making the sweet love yet. So, but they are hanging off these drops. So we're fishing the drops, casting up into the shallow and then letting the, the, the crayfish flies fall. Oh, there's one behind it here, Tom. Good one. So try to get a buddy fish. Yeah. And the quality of these fish is just amazing. No, nope, couldn't get them. Not interested, huh? No. Nope. How do you like that? Fantastic fish, Hawk Lake Lodge. All right, I want to take this opportunity to thank Ted Putnam and everybody at Hawk Lake Lodge for putting us up and in having an absolutely amazing time. The fishing here is fantastic. I want to thank you for watching The New Fly Fisher. My name is Mark Melnick. Remember, adventure is out there, and what better way than to go and find it with a fly rod in your hand. From everybody at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the backcountry. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from the new Fly Fisher Television Show. If you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Also, we're uploading new videos all the time, so hit the bell to be notified when the next one goes up. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks,